Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, Aqualic Consulting from here in Connecticut. We also assist companies in the implementation and accreditation of uh, their systems, ISO certified and all derivatives. I'm going to show you today, and this video today is no confidence in the integrity and competence of ANSI ANAB's AS9100 proven by Boeing. You will find out in this video that the American National Standards Institute formulated and basically owns the International Accreditation Forum in Delaware, which is a repository for both national and international accreditation bodies, along with its sister organization in Australia, I have sister organization, the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. We make no bones about it. You're gonna find out that your AS9100 that you keep on on your wall is bullshit. Did I say that? <laughs> That's a quality term. <laughs> You'll find out that I know, I hear it all the time. Daryl, oh, you know something? It's a useless certificate. It's pay to play. And that's exactly what I've heard over my many years in quality and also opening up my own business. I had companies that wanted, in fact, there was a company down in Garland, Texas, excellent guys, Steve and Stan, fantastic people. And they wanted my business to uh, certify them to AS9100. We were on the phone with two Boeing employees from purchasing and they have on the purchasing document, more than likely than not, they have must be ANSI ANEP. Why? You're gonna find out in this video that Boeing controls it all. Boeing sits on the board of ANC ANAP, not on the, just the board of directors, but the board, the management committee that can grant, suspend, and withdraw certification. Boom. You have it on the supplier portal, Boeing, saying that must be ANC ANAP or internationally equivalent. We're not even gonna get into what internationally equivalent can mean for Boeing, but that's what they say. And then number three, the Paris de Resistance in a bulletin, Supplier Bulletin for 2002. It basically says if you are AS9100 for aerospace certified, okay, which is an international standard, and you are ANSI ANAB accredited, send in your cert, send in your parts, and Boeing doesn't have to do an audit on your facility, so they don't know where the hell those parts are coming from. Leave the blame up to supplier number B. We don't know where he is, but he's the one who made the parts. It's their fault. Oh, God. So anyway... Again, no confidence in the integrity and competence of ANSI ANAB's AS9100 and proven by Boeing. Uh, let's continue. You'll find out that they broke the uh, Sherman Clayton Act of 1914 for antitrust, anti-competitive, and monopolistic. You'll find out it's a monopoly, and I prove it. The only issue is, is that they all sit harmoniously on ANSI's board, right, or by federal agencies that are supposed to help the public, like me, like the FTC, where I had several years ago a Ms. A Mr. Adam Friedman who said that there's, um, or Alan Friedman, who said that during, uh, in a week's time, they get 10,000 complaints at the FTC, and they basically cherry-pick the the easy ones, but 10,000 amongst four workers. That's what he said. Now, he'll probably say, look, that Guberman's a liar. Let me tell you something. My company's name is Guberman. I will not, I shall not, and I can't disparage that. Let's continue. The American National Standards Institute is a private, not-for-profit, non-governmental corporation that's been around for over 100 years. It's got uh, federal agencies and corporations on board. We're going to go through this pretty quickly. This is a flow chart. You have Randy Dirtery in 2015. He is at that time the, um, the chairman of the IAF and the principal on the IAF tax support, International Accreditation Forum Incorporated in Delaware. Uh, he uh, handed over leadership to this guy over here, Zhao Jin Wu, who's been involved with our quality for over, yes, many, many years, 30 years now, since 1994, involved with our quality. So he handed over leadership. At that time, he was the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services in Beijing, China. We're just going to briefly skim over this. We have a picture coming up shortly of him standing in the Wuhan lab, issuing a certificate that he shouldn't have issued because... In 2018, after he issued a certificate in 2017, some American uh, specialists went over to Wuhan, China, to the laboratory, BioLevel 4, for uh, virology and uh, for very high uh, contagions. That's what it is. So they went there and the scientists were complaining. They were saying, we don't have enough trained technicians, trained technicians. You will see the CDC document that states that the most valuable individuals of containment, first line of defense, is well-trained technicians. So he gave a certificate that was bogus. Shame on him. 
Another one, you have ANSI, ANAP. ANSI took over complete control over ANAP, and you have federal agencies and corporations. It's only a sample. You have ANAP that sits on ANSI's board, and ANSI sits on ANAP's board. As I said before, ANSI took over complete control over ANAP in 2018, and they sat at that time between 2015 and 2021, they sat and were controlled and manipulated by communist China. Those federal organizations, agencies that sat on ANSI's board are guilty by association, and it's not hacking that they had during those times, and they still get it. FBI, CDC, NIH, you're all getting hacked who sit on ANSI's board. Because Zhao Jinwu, the guy that I showed you, the Chinese national that took over the IF between 2015 and 21, he is mandated by his country of origin, communist China, to take our data through the China National Intelligence Law, Article Number 7. Here is 10 different registrars in China that can issue an ANAB, ANSI ANAB accreditation. To prove my validity, here's an actual contract, a standard operating work order from the State Department. Guess what? They are demanding on this contract ANSI, ANAB, and they have to have a little IAF logo. So basically, our own government invited China in because China at the time, remember 2015 to 21, this is 2018, China was watching over us. Isn't that nice? And to prove to you, here it is, right here. It said that ANAB is an underwriter for the international accreditation form. Isn't that a tender moment? So here's Zhao Jinwu in the lab. Uh, at the time he gave that cert, he is also the IF chairman back in the United States, and he's also the chief executive of the China National Accreditation Services. By him giving a certificate into a laboratory that is faulty, there's a big, big issue. But we also have to blame it on our own government, because here is the actual article for the second annual workshop between May 17th and 19th, 2017 in Wuhan, China. And the first score of business is about gain of function research. Something that Rand Paul asked Anthony Fauci, I guess before they went out to lunch after the Inquisition, I'm sure they go out to lunch, maybe, could be, possibly, but he asked Fauci and Fauci said, I know nothing about gain of function. Well, what happened there two years before COVID really broke out, here it is, they're talking about gain of function. Here's the actual uh, China document in English, of course, that is discussing the whole Wuhan certification. You also have that picture there of Zhao Jinwu, uh, in the laboratory, in the faulty laboratory that he should not have given the certificates to because the uh, the uh, specialists from the United States were getting ragged upon saying, we need, you know, from the guys, from the scientists and we want, we need trained specialists. And here is the other document that I showed you that's blown up right over there. Here is the actual CDC document from May of 2019, ladies and gentlemen. And I will go, and it's like on page three, and it said, the safety and function of the BioLevel 4 lab, that's a hell of a contagion laboratory there, rely not only on containment facility and biosafety management systems, but also a highly qualified and experienced staff. Stop the video because I'm gonna continue on. You can't make that up. And then you have Pamela Sale. At the time, I think 2018, 17, she was giving a deposition in Texas. I'm not gonna read it to you. You can stop the video and read it yourself. I will give you an overview of it because I've read it so many times. She basically confesses to why Wuhan China let the virus go, COVID-19. She confesses to it. And, and you have the factor that ANSI ANAB are underwriters for the China National Accreditation Services that certify the lab. Do you hear that, lawyers? Every time I say that, ladies and gentlemen, you know why the lawyers aren't doing shit like they're going to do for the poor Alaska airline uh, uh, people? Because they said statistically, uh, both plaintiff and defendant's attorneys have been asked after court hearings. And the 85% of those questioned whether plaintiff or defendant said that they had a gut feeling, 85% now, had a gut feeling that their attorneys colluded with each other. So you think Boeing's attorneys aren't going to offer those attorneys some kind of money? In fact, I had a lawyer 40 years write me a note and say, Daryl, an email, I have it. Daryl, both state and federal courts are no more than blue smoke and mirrors. And here you go. A majority of failures happen in accredited labs. Now we go on to Boeing. Now, Boeing is funny. Uh, we got a letter from uh, Randy, and at the time he was a technical advisor, although 
uh, on the Department of Homeland Security who was advertised in that time frame as the vice president of ANAP. So I don't know whether he was a tech advisor. Anyway, he said, while my colleagues and I at ANAP can attest to the confidence and the integrity and competence of registers accredited by IAF member accreditation bodies, we cannot attest to this for your body. But we are very careful not to disparage your body, all the rest. But they wouldn't allow me into Boeing when in 2013 I gave a speech at the American Society for Quality. And there was a guy, Dave Levy, there who was sent there to try to destroy me. You can't do it. I'll get too much information. You just cannot do it. You know, I'm like a bad penny. I just keep on coming up and up again. So he said that, Mr. Guberman, ANAP has no problem with what you're doing. In fact, we support you. At the time, the American Society for Quality owned ANAP, American National Credit Board, 50%, and ANSI owned 50%. In 2016, Randy Dodry had asked us to join either IAF or ANAP or both, but how is I a proud American? Think about this. How would I join with my company when ANSI ANAP sits on the IAF that was controlled and manipulated by China since 2015, a year later, Randy asked us. So of course I said no, because we believe in independence. Boeing sits on ANSI's board. Isn't that a tender moment? In fact, we got the certificate, T-U-V-S-U-D, certifying Boeing with the ANAB and IAF logo. Isn't that a tender moment? And the worst thing is, is sitting, sitting on ANSI ANAB's board are seven different registrars. As you can see, T-U-V is sitting there. You have Boeing sitting by their registrar and sitting by the accreditation body that they use. So how in good conscience when Randy says, or, or, while my colleagues and I here at ANAB can have the confidence of the integrity and quality of those accreditation bodies that sit on the IAF, he's bullshitting. He's a liar. Look at this. And by the way, TUV was involved with Nazi Germany certifying the um, carbon monoxide containment vessels that killed a lot of people. Christians and Jews. Yeah, they certified. I've got actual letters from commandants there. Yes, TUV did change its name to protect its, you can say innocence? Who the hell knows? Anyway, it says in ISO 1711, and 1711 is for conformity assessment requirements for accreditation bodies like ANAP and accrediting conformity assessment bodies, registrars. That's all it means. And this comes right out of impartiality. The accreditation body shall be responsible for impartiality of its accreditation activities and shall not allow commercial, financial, or other pressures to compromise impartiality. So can you say this is um, impartial when you have TUVSUD on a Boeing certificate as the registrar, ANS, ANSI ANAP and the IAF on the certificate as the accreditor, and here's Boeing sitting right over by them on the board. They broke that, they, they broke it, they, they, they trampled on that standard. There is no integrity and quality in there. So I'm gonna leave it here. I've gone into other things. Um, I wanted to show you this. There is no integrity uh, in the dispensation of an ANSI ANEB accredited certification, and I prove it time and time again. The rest of the data will be down by, uh, below, like Boeing in 2002 with their supplier portal that said, <laughs> supplier bulletin that says, send in your AS9100 certificate as long as it's ANSI ANEB accredited, send in your parts, and Boeing doesn't have to go audit you. And then you have, in 2009, you have the factor that they became a regulator. FAA gave them regulatory authority. That means Boeing, regulator, and also the FAA. So how in good conscience, and here it is, just to prove this to you, here's the FAA and here's Boeing. How could one regulator regulate another regulator? It's impossible. And of course, on the supplier portal that they have, here it is must be ANSI, ANAP, or internationally equivalent, breaking the Sherman Act for sure, and here you go. On the uh, Management System Accreditation Committee for ANAP, ANSI, ANAP, and there they are down below, that can grant, suspend, or withdraw certification. I'm gonna stop here. I think I gave you enough information. The rest of it will be down below this video, 203-556-1493, or Daryl, tqrs at yahoo.com. I thank you.